Good afternoon. My name is Michael Felix, and I am the commander of Veterans of Foreign Wars, post 10218 of Greater Almani. We're located at 11126 Ramona Boulevard, City of Almani. That's at the corner of Ramona and Valley. We're uh, behind the 99 cent store. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about what we do there and a few other programs. I really want to uh, say thank you to our El Monte Cable Station, Alice uh, Barella and Art Esparza for inviting me here and to be able to share with you uh, what we're doing. A, uh, the VFW, Veterans of Foreign War, are uh, combat veterans. We were the veterans that served in a combat location, and uh, we are pretty proud of that since only 1% of all military people have been in combat. One thing I want to do today is to invite all veterans in the city of El Monte, South El Monte, who's ever seen this show uh, to become a member of the Veterans of Foreign War. Uh, our main goal is veterans helping veterans and also to work in our community and to, you know, give something back again. And as a part of our recruiting process, we'd like, especially for some of the younger men and women, who are coming back from Iraq and now Afghanistan. If any of you would like to join, we would love to have you. And uh, all you need to do is come down to the post between 9 and 3, Monday through Friday. Bring us your DD-214. And for any of those people who were in any of that Iraqi freedom or in Afghanistan, our post will pay for your uh, first year's uh, membership. And I think it's very vitally important for all the young people that are coming out, anybody coming out of the military, it's very important for you to belong to a veterans organization and to find out what is coming to you. It seems to be getting a little more difficult for veterans to get their benefits, and we want to make sure that our young men and women who are serving our country are getting what they're entitled to. And that's one thing that we are doing in, uh, at the Veterans. We have developed uh, a motto called HOME, and that means helping our military effort, where we in reality want our post to be, uh, feel like a second home to our veterans, a place that's comfortable, inviting, and welcoming. A lot of uh, our veterans uh, come back with mixed emotions, and we want you to know there's other veterans there to share your stories, your problems, whatever with. And it's not just for the young ones. We have all types of veterans. We have World War II veterans, Korean veterans, Vietnam veterans, Desert Storm veterans, Bosnia, Herzegovina veterans, and Iraqi and Afghanistan vets. So it's a wide range of veterans. And, you know, veterans, we all have one thing in common, and that's we all proudly served our country. And we want to make sure that the veterans in our community get their opportunity to get their benefits. Um, you know, we need people to come down, see what we can do for you. Uh, a lot of people ask, what can the VFW do for me? How do I get help? Uh, do I need to be a member to receive assistance? No, you don't. Uh, Anyhow, there's a lot of questions, and we're there to help you out to sort through it. It's of vital interest and importance that especially these younger uh, veterans that are coming home now, 
to get into the Veterans Administration system. For a lot of us older guys that uh, didn't do it or made a half heart attempt, it's getting more and more difficult for us to uh, qualify. When you first get out, even though you might not want to have anything to do with uh, the government or the military, it's pretty important that you keep your papers in a safe place and you get down, even if there's nothing wrong with you or nothing that feels wrong right now, to get your name in with the Veterans Administration because you never know what's going to happen down the road. So where one of our main strains today is to make sure that veterans know there is a place. You do not have to be a combat veteran to come to the VFW Hall. We have a plethora of information there on all kinds of veterans activities and programs that are available to you. If we don't know where to help you, we'll try to find out and steer you in that uh, area. We really want to try to help all the veterans in town. So our plea is to please come out and see what we got going on. Like I said, we're open uh, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, we do, uh, you know, do a lot of things there to help out veterans, but also to help out the community. And we'd like people to come and see what our hall looks like. Uh, we uh, got this hall a few years ago, and we have really, really uh, turned it around. We welcome the community to come see. Our meetings, our regular membership meetings, are on the second Thursdays of the month at 6.30. And then on the fourth Thursday of each month, we have a potluck where we invite the members, their families, and the community. So that's all of you that are out there that want to see what the Veterans Hall looks like or see what we're doing in there. All we ask is that you bring a little something to eat and share and come down and share with us. That's on the fourth Thursday of the month. So please come down. Also, we need to let you know if you need a place to uh, rent for a wedding, a quinceanera, a party, anything. Our hall is a great, great venue. We can hold up to 250 uh, people in the hall. There's over 5,300 square feet. Uh, we've got a carpeted stage. We've got central air. We've even got a working disco ball. Uh, it comes with tables and chairs. It's got clean men, women, disabled restrooms, a walk-in refrigerator. Uh, we've got a bar with a beverage cooler. Uh, bartenders and security comes with a rental. We've got plenty of parking. So we'd like you please to consider uh, the VFW Hall for anything that you might have coming up. Uh, when we rent the hall, that's one of the ways that we can try to generate a little revenue. The hall itself is uh, kind of expensive to run. Uh, the electric bills are quite high and other utilities. And we're trying to keep this hall open for veterans not only for the older veterans, but our goal is to uh, have a place for the younger veterans to come. For us Vietnam veterans, of which I am one, uh, when we came home, we really didn't feel like we were welcome home. And it was a great shock and of great dismay to many of us who uh, came home and were not ready for the way that we were treated. Our goal is to make sure that the young veterans that are coming home now are treated a whole lot better than we were treated. And that's one of our goals at our post 
is to reach out to the people that are coming back and to make sure that they can get their questions answered, that they can get whatever benefits they have, and that we can steer them in the right direction. That is what we are there for. We uh, have many things to offer veterans. One thing we have, and I think every veteran uh, would need this, it's the California Veterans Resources book. And this book basically gives a whole lot of information about what resources are out there in the state of California, what's available, uh, where things are, it's free. We get them donated to us by the California Department of Veterans Affairs. And uh, we would like to make sure that people in the community have them, especially if you're a veteran. So if you are a veteran, and it doesn't matter, once again, if you're a combat veteran or not, uh, you need to come down and get a book so you can have this at home to familiarize yourself with the different programs that are out there for veterans. Uh, at this Veterans Hall, we're also trying to be involved in the community and help out in any way that we can. Uh, we do have a lifeline screening that is coming up, and that is to, uh, uh, for uh, people, there's a stroke carotid artery screening, heart rhythm screening, abdominal aortic, uh, aortic aneurysm screening, arterial disease screening, and osteoporosis risk assessment. So we've got the information down there. There are discounts for veterans. That'll be Thursday, April 18th, and it will be uh, during the day in, uh, at the VFW Hall. So anybody that wants information about that, you know, please come on down and get some information about it. We also, at the Hall, one way that we are uh, trying to generate funds and help out in the community as well is by our yard sales. And we have yard sales about four times a year. And the reason I'm bringing this up is not only to let the community know that we have yard sales and a lot of items at very low prices, but to also let the whole community know if, you know, here it is spring, spring's coming. And if you're gonna do some spring cleaning and you wanna get rid of some of those old uh, knickknacks or frames, lamps, books, anything that you might have in the closets or garage, uh, VFW will gladly take those donations. And uh, with those donations that we get throughout the community, we usually do a yard sale, as I said, about once every uh, three months or four months. Uh, whatever we don't uh, get rid of or sell, we then donate it to uh, either uh, emergency services, Lily and Ray, or we give it to the Hope Chest, which is a, the, the store for uh, Hope House, or to Vietnam Veterans of America. So everything that is donated goes to a good cause. So please remember that. You got anything extra, bring it down to the VFW Hall. Thank you. Hello. I'm Mike Felix once again, Commander of Veterans of Foreign War, uh, VFW Post uh, 10 to 18. Uh, at uh, 11126 Ramona, that's in El Monte. We serve all of El Monte, South El Monte, even Rosemead. And we are located uh, at the corner of Valley and Ramona behind the 99 cent store, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. I am a, a Vietnam veteran. I was there from 1967 
all through 1968. And one of the things I would like to uh, touch on uh, today is the fact that uh, there's a l large problem of especially Vietnam veterans that have contacted uh, or were exposed to Agent Orange, okay? Agent Orange was a, a, a blend of herbicides that uh, the U.S. military used from 1962 to 1965, and that was during uh, Operation Ranch Hand in Vietnam. The reason they used this uh, Agent Orange, it was basically to remove trees and dense uh, tropical foliage uh, that provided the enemy with cover. Vietnam was very, very tropical. Uh, there were a lot of jungles, a lot of trees. And so they would uh, spray this to defoliate. More than 19 million gallons of various herbicides uh, were sprayed. And this is what they're letting us know. Uh, and if they are uh, admitting to 19 million gallons, we think there might have even been more. Uh, of all these herbicides, Agent Orange was the one they used the most. And it's really simple the way the name came about. And it came about, well, this herbicide was put in these large 55-gallon drums. Each drum was uh, sprayed with an orange stripe so that people knew that was the Agent Orange, okay? And they, the, these, the Department of Defense developed these uh, especially to be used in combat operations. The problem was they were not commercial grade herbicides, okay? Uh, these were uh, tactical herbicides that were used, tested, and storage in areas outside of Vietnam and not officially approved. The reason for me bringing that up is that there were many, many people exposed to Agent Orange. The United States government listed specifically uh, for 1962 to 1975 in Vietnam, but also in the demilitarized zone, the DMZ in Korea from April 1st, 1968 to the end of August, 1971, okay? However, as I had stated earlier, Agent Orn was tried and tested in various posts and bases throughout the United States and the world. At our post, we do have a copy of all of the sites. And if anybody would like to come down, we can provide you of a copy with that. Uh, we really think that it's important for the men and any women, if they were involved, to come in, get tested, get their benefits. Unfortunately, we're finding out that a lot of veterans, Vietnam era veterans, are dying of cancer uh, at a younger age. And there is a lot of people that uh, speculate that has something to do with these uh, <clears throat> different types of herbicides like Agent Orange that were sprayed. Uh, on us, but also how were they handled, how did they come about, how did they get there, how were they taken out. Agent Orange was uh, basically all over, and we have a lot of people, uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of the most that is 
<coughs> excuse me, one of the most common uh, illnesses that is sought from Agent Orange. But, <coughs> excuse me, there are also other ones such as B cell, leukemia, Parkinson's disease, excuse me, or ischemic heart uh, disease. These are some of the different diseases that are affected by the Agent Orange chemical. And we would like veterans who were in that time period, in that frame, to come down and get checked out. Also, another important fact that any spouses, children, parents of uh, service members and veterans who are deceased or totally or permanently disabled by any service uh, connected disability may also be eligible uh, for dependent and survivor benefits. What are some of these benefits? Their compensation, pension, health care, education, home loans, and burial. There are quite a few different programs associated with this. And it's really important uh, that, you know, the Vietnam War just celebrated its 50th anniversary. So many of us who were very young um, are now in our 60s, even 70s. And it's never too late to find out what's going on and did any of this stuff affect you or is it affecting you or any of your family. One major problem has been in birth defects for the children of uh, these Vietnam veteran or Republic of Korea veterans. And unfortunately, the most common one seems to be spina bifida. So we would really like uh, anybody that has those problems to investigate it so that we can look and make sure that we're, uh, people are getting the help. As I said, we have a lot of information at the hall for not only Agent Orange, but maybe any other type of disability that you have. We have worked hard to uh, get a representative uh, from the VA, and we are really fortunate that from Los Angeles County Department of Veteran Services, uh, we have a gentleman named Frank Valencia, that comes out every Friday or every other Friday and meets with our veterans. If you would like more information about Frank, how we can hook you up with him, uh, all you need to do is come by our post and we can try to contact him and get you an appointment. We're doing this because we feel that uh, it's a lot easier for some of our members to get to our post and see a VA rep. That's not to say they can handle everything at our post, but we can at least get your claim started and you might be able to answer some of the basic questions that you need answered. Do I qualify? Uh, what do I need to qualify? How much information do I need? Those are all questions that many of us have uh, you know, just put to the side. And what we're trying to do at our post is make veterans aware of what their benefits are. When we were in the military, we signed up to uh, proudly defend our country, and they promised to take care of us in return. There are many veterans and many people that don't feel that they have really kept their word, and we want to try to make sure that we, in any way that we can, can help out the veterans in our community. You know, veterans are super patriotic. We did fight for this country, and we did put our lives on the line. So we would like to make sure that all those worthy men and women get their just due, get what is coming to them. 
So please, if you get an opportunity, come by where we can talk to you more about Agent Orange, the effects of it, get you some more information, see if it has, you know, impacted you in any certain way, we would be glad to do that. When we're speaking also about Vietnam veterans, we want to let you know there's a couple of more events coming up. Uh, Rose Hills is having a uh, Welcome Home Vet Vietnam Veterans Day on Sunday, March 24th, uh, right here. There's a Veterans Resource Fair from 11.45 to 4.30, and there's going to be information, support, services for veterans. There will be a free concert at 6 p.m. at the Sky Rose Chapel, and there will also be a special service at 6 for a homeless veteran burial service. And all of these events are free, and so we just want to make sure that we pass that on to you so that you uh, get an idea. Uh, also, there is the fifth annual Welcome Home Vet Vietnam Veterans Day in uh, Whittier. It will be once again at Cal High, and this one will be uh, Saturday, April 13th, 2013. It will be from 11 to 4.30, and it is just a recognition of all Vietnam veterans. So... Uh, we want to make sure that enough people come there. If you have any other questions, please come down and see us. Our post has been uh, actively involved along with the city and Mercy Housing to get some homeless housing going here in El Monte. And we're so excited and uh, so proud that we did break ground on Veterans Day. And if you go by Stuart and Ramona on the other side of the tracks from where our post is, you will see that they are getting ready to pour the foundation. And I'm really proud of the people uh, that are working on that, especially our good friend Damien from the city of El Monte. They're really pushing that project through and uh, we're hoping that it's up and running real soon. We'll be talking about veterans uh, some more in our next show. Before I go, there's some people that I'd like to quickly thank that have continued to help uh, VFW and El Monte. That'd be Cardinal Industrial Finishes, The Mid Valley News, Shakey's Pizza, Flo's Coffee Shop, Smitty's Sign Company, and the uh, Anya's Kitchen. Lastly, but most importantly, the El Monte Police Officers Association and the El Monte Explorers. All of these have been great supporters. We greatly appreciate them, and we greatly appreciate our own cable channel here. Thank all of you. God bless America. God bless El Monte. God bless all of you. Thank you. <laughs>